Hey fellow lab rats, this is Rebecca from the Lab Rat YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to be talking to you about the basic, most commonly used reagents in the blood bank laboratory. Alrighty, let's get started. So today I'm going to be talking to you about the most commonly used reagents in the blood bank laboratory. So the first one here is what we call anti-A. It's used in red cell determination of the ABO blood group. So in the forward typing or the front typing of the ABO typing. Uh, so this contains antibodies toward a red blood cell antigen. Um, so this means that if the patient's red blood cell suspension agglutinates with this reagent, um, their uh, red blood cells have the A antigen. Uh, so this reagent is always blue in color uh, to help with determination. Um, even though it's blue, that does not mean that you should not be reading the label. So you definitely want to read the label every single time you pick up a blood bank reagent, even if it's blue in color. Um, just for patient safety reasons. So here's our anti-A. The next one is anti-B. So this is in uh, used in red cell determination of the ABO blood group as well as the anti-A. Um, and this contains antibodies towards the B red blood cell antigen. So that means that if the patient's red blood cell suspension agglutinates with this reagent, um, their red cells have the B antigen. And just like with the anti-A reagent, the anti-B is always a specific color, and you can see here it is yellow. So it's always going to be yellow. But again, whenever you're using this reagent and any blood bank reagent, you need to read the label to make sure that it is the reagent that you uh, think it is. All right, so that's anti-B. So this one is anti-D reagent. So this is also used in red cell determination of the ABO blood grouping. Uh, so the front typing or forward typing of the ABO blood typing uh, procedure. Uh, this contains antibodies uh, towards the D antigen. And this actually determines a patient's RH status. So if a patient's red blood cell suspension agglutinates with this reagent, uh, their red cells have the capital D antigen and they can be considered RH positive. If the patient's red blood cell suspension does not agglutinate with this reagent, the patient does not have that capital D antigen present on their red blood cells, and uh, that means that they are um, RH negative. So this reagent is always clear, as you can see. This is anti-D. And the next one here, if you can see it, is anti-AB reagent. So this is also used in red cell determination of the ABO blood group this contains antibodies towards AB antigens. So if red cells agglutinate with this reagent, that means they either have A antigens, they either have B antigens, or they have both A and B antigens present on their red blood cell. So this reagent is also clear, like the anti-D, and it's actually not used for normal uh, patient ABO typing. Um, so it's mainly used for donor red blood cell confirmation, so if the donor blood is labeled as an O, uh, it can be confirmed as O if it types negative with this reagent. So, um, and that is because O red blood cells do not have A or B antigens present on them. So it's quicker and more cost efficient to use this reagent in that particular situation rather than just using the anti-A and anti-B reagents separately. So this is anti-A-B. Now the next region here is labeled A1. And this is used for the detection of antibodies towards A antigens in a patient's plasma. So this means that if a patient's plasma agglutinates with this reagent, they have anti-A antibodies present in their plasma. So this is used in the reverse or back typing um, part of the ABO uh, typing. So I'm gonna leave this one out here because I'm gonna show you something here in a second. This next one is the B cell reagent. 
you can see there are red blood cells. This one also, A1 also has red blood cells. Sorry, I didn't show you that. Um, so it, this is also used for the detection of antibodies. And specifically, it's looking for antibodies towards B antigens in a patient's plasma. So this means that if a patient's plasma agglutinates with this particular reagent, they have anti-B antibodies present in their plasma. So one thing to note about any blood bank reagent that uses red blood cells. So you want to make sure that they are properly mixed. So if you see here on the bottom, here we go, sorry. Um, there's a little bit of red blood cells there, but not a whole lot. So you see how that's fully mixed. There's no red cells present on the bottom. So if you look on this one, see how there's lots of red blood cells present here? You wanna make sure that this is properly mixed. So every time you use a red cell based uh, blood bank reagent, you want to properly mix it to make sure all those red blood cells are off the bottom of the uh, vial. So see how I'm gently mixing? You don't want to do this, okay? So I can do this here because these are expired reagents and I'm in a college laboratory, but this is incor that's incorrect. It causes bubbles. It can lice the cells. So you want to just gently get those red blood cells off the surface or the bottom of the uh, reagent vial. So those are my A1 and my B cells. So the next reagent here is gamma low ion. Um, it's also called LIS, so L-I-S-S. -S. Um, this stands for low ionic strength saline. And this is used, as you can see, it's clear, just like this. So this is used to potentiate reactions between antibodies and red blood cells. So this reagent lowers the zeta potential, which allows any antibodies, if present, of course, um, in the patient's plasma to be more efficient at agglutinating uh, with incompatible red blood cells. Um, so this can be used in antibody screens um, and also antibody panels to encourage any antibodies to react. So this is low ion or LIS. And the next one is also a potentiator. So this is PEG. So you can see it says PEG on there, gamma PEG specifically. Um, this is also clear as well. Um, so PEG actually stands for polyethylene glycol. And this is used to potentiate reactions um, between antibodies and the red blood cell. So it works by reducing water around the surface of the red blood cell which allows those red blood cells to get closer together. And it also helps to concentrate any antibodies if present around the surface of the red blood cell. Um, so this reagent can be used just like with Enlist. It can be used in potentiating antibody screens and also antibody panels to encourage any antibodies if present to react. So that is PEG. Okay, so these next two reagents I'm going to be talking about. This first one is a reagent called anti-IgG, uh, but it's commonly referred to as AHG or anti-human globulin. Um, it's used for um, the both IAT and DAT procedures. So IAT being indirect antiglobulin tests and DAT being direct antiglobulin tests. Um, so this is a monospecific reagent, meaning that it detects in vivo sensitization of red blood cells coated with IgG only antibodies. Um, so IATs that it's used in um, include antibody screens, antibody panels, cross matching, meaning um, cross matching the um, patient's serum or plasma with uh, donor red blood cells to see if they're compatible, and also certain antigen typing. Um, it's also used in DATs for in vivo sensitization of red blood cells. So like I said, specifically for that IgG antibodies. Um, so this reagent is usually always green in color, although I have seen some that are clear. So I got it out with this one because they are similar. See if you can see it a little bit. Yeah, hopefully. Um, so this is anti-IgG C3D reagent. So this is a polyspecific reagent. So remember, this one's monospecific. This is the polyspecific. And how this differs uh, from the previous reagent is that it is not specific for just one antibody. It's polyspecific. So this reagent is used for DATs uh, for the detection of in vivo sensitization of red blood cells coated with IgG antibodies or complement components. So this reagent is usually always green in color, um, although I have seen some that are clear. So there, here's your AHGs. Now this next one, 
These are red blood cells as well, as you can see. So again, these are ones that you're going to have to gently invert to get those red cells off the bottom before you use it. Um, so those two uh, green reagents I just showed you are called AHG or also Coombs reagents. Um, so this reagent specifically um, contains IgG coated red blood cells. So all of the red blood cells present in this vial are coated with IgG antibodies. Um, so it's commonly referred to as uh, Coombs control or also check cells. As you can see, it's labeled check cells here. Um, so when an IAT or DAT test is performed on a patient uh, and when it's negative, meaning no agglutination has occurred, the AHG reagent, so this reagent here, this reagent here, is just hanging out in the tube. And these IgG coated red blood cells, when added to that tube or added to that negative test, will agglutinate with uh, that AHG reagent. And so this serves as a control for that AHG reagent. Um, so whether or not it's working or if the uh, blood banker has properly added uh, the HG reagent to the tube, so it will test for that. So if a negative IAT or DAT test does not agglutinate when these check cells are added, the test is invalid and has to be repeated. So those are check cells. So the next uh, group of reagents I'm going to show you are screening cells. So you can see here, this is labeled one, this is labeled two, and this is labeled three. So these are used for the antibody screen. So when a patient has a type and screen ordered on them, this is the screening portion of it. So cells one, two, and three. And you notice here, these are red blood cells, and this, this is really not mixed up at all. These have just been sitting here. So you definitely wanna invert these to make sure all those red blood cells are properly mixed and off the bottom of this. So what these are used for, again, is for the screen. And they come with this little pano screen identification. So you can see here, so this, off to the side is number one, number two, and number three. And it will show you what antigens are present on the red blood cells. So specifically number three here, number three, these are all the antigens that it has. And so if this particular patient, you know, whatever patient you're working on is positive with any of these in their, their IAT screen or their antibody screen, that means you're going to have to identify what antibody is present. And you do so with the next reagents that I'm gonna show you um, with an antibody panel. Um, but you can use these uh, this screening uh, cell panel to uh, help to eliminate and identify antibodies. So those are what these three are. Now I'm going to put them back and then I'm going to show you the panel reagents. So this here are the panel reagents and you would only do an antibody panel on a patient if it was if their screen was positive with any of these three uh, reagents. So you wouldn't just do this on any patient, it's just if they have a positive antibody screen. So this is an antibody panel and it works the same way as an antibody screen, it's just a lot more cells. So each one of these is labeled, that's number nine, let's get out number one to show you here. Yeah, okay, so this is number one, right? And so these are red cells as well, so you want to make sure to uh, invert them and, and gently mix them before you use them. Um, so these are labeled one through I think this is the last one, 16, that's, is this a 16 cell panel? It is, okay. So depending on uh, certain panels, they'll have more than, uh, more than others. So each one of these uh, uh, vials has a number associated with them. And so all of these, just like this, the screening cells, they all have um, the number and then what antigens are present on their red blood cells. So these reagents have known red blood cells uh, antigens on them. So these are donor blood that they've used uh, for these panels. So this is how you do your antibody panel cross outs with these particular cells. Uh, one thing that's very important to know about these particular panel cells and these screening cells is all, all of these have a lot number associated with them. So for example, uh, let's see if I can find the lot number on here. 
these are old ones. So lot number here is 3SS184, okay? And so all of these screening cells, and actually, I don't, as a matter of fact, all of the reagents are going to have them, but specifically the screening cells and the panel cells will have these lot numbers, and you want to make sure that the lot number matches the uh, the lot number on the screens that you're going to be using, these cross-offs that you're going to be using, because they're not all the same. All the lot numbers will be the, have the same, um, but not necessarily from lot to lot. So that's one thing you definitely need to make sure um, that you pay attention to. Also, um, important to note about uh, blood bank reagents. Um, so all these reagents are QC'd every day um, to make sure that they're working. Um, and depending on where you're working at, it depends on what shift. Um, usually, from my experience, they either do it on third shift or first shift um, to make sure every uh, all of these are working every single day. Um, also, you want to make sure um, before you use your blood bank reagents for the day to check their expiration dates as well. So the person who is responsible for doing QC that day will, will likely check them, um, but it's always good to double check. Um, also, just as a general rule, I like to keep all of my blood bank reagents in the same spot. So for example, I would not want to put my A up here, or I don't want to put my check cells here. Whoops, I definitely don't want to throw them, but I don't want to put my check cells here and then put my screen cells over here. Um, so you definitely, when you're using these reagents, you want to check the labels every time, but it's just setting yourself up for failure for putting them in the wrong space every time. So make sure that you keep all of your reagents in the same spot every time. And these will, hopefully, um, this will set you up for success.